guys, welcome back to another project project video. Here we are, L405 Range Rover. Cheeky little test drive and a little review of this car. Uh, been a car I've been wanting to do for a while. Lovely day, so I thought, you know what it is, I'll take it out and see what it's all about here. Um, thought I'd just give you a quick walk around. So this is the L405 Range Rover. This is the 4.4 SDV8 Auto Biography. I think this is finished in Santorini black. Lovely gold fleck there. Sorry, it's a little bit dirty. But yeah, lovely gold and red fleck there. Sounds lovely. Lots of power. A little bit mucky, but you know what it is. I believe every Range Rover should be. Like I said, some size this car. Really, really is. It is a very, very big car, this. Very, very big car. Massive brakes. Brembo 22s, so that's aftermarket 22s. From factory, it would have had 22 inch autobiography wheels. Genuine autobiography spec. Got the wood trim, Viridian sound system. So, yeah, lovely. I love this. The autobiography is embossed in the center headrest. I think it's a radiant sound system, so you've got speakers in the seats, full panoramic roof, leather headliner, which I find really, really strange, but mm, I don't know. I suppose it's easy to wipe down all the stains that obviously you'll get on all the roofs of the Range Rover. Custom mods, always nice. Got all the lovely wood. All the lovely satin and chrome, fixtures and fittings, steering wheel wood, lovely. Range Rover barge. It is just a really, really nice place to sit here. So, we'll, uh, we'll take it for a cheeky test drive. So guys, here we are in the Range Rover L405. And immediately I see that the car actually has a, a much more modern layout over the L322 although I have to say that the L322 um, something about the interior on the L322 I just feel it's more robust it's more sort of built for purpose this with its miles of leather and wood and satin chrome and brushed aluminium finishing is just it just doesn't scream robustness it's a Basically, what every Range Rover is now is it's a Chelsea tractor. It's that you know champagne lifestyle that everybody seems to crave nowadays, and I feel that's where the L322 um, had that sort of look about it, but it also um, had the the robustness and that sort of charismatic character um, of it being built for purpose. You know, you could be a farmer and you could go out in your L322 and, you know, if you wanted to go to, you know, the centre of Chelsea, you know, you know it's, it would look out of place where this, this is just literally built to be a luxury off-roader. Um, in that sort of never-ending market of luxury off-roaders, it's just one of those things. It never, you know, that brand of Range Rover now, that's where the brand is now. It's just all about Chelsea tractors, 22-inch wheels. Yes, they still have and still retain um, really, really good off-road capabilities, but I feel like in the L405, it's just, it's just not, that's just not how it's supposed to be, I think, in the L405. We're having some traffic light issues here, uh, where I'm at currently, and I'm not too sure what's going on, so I'm just going to head up the A19 now. Torque wise, this car has got an amazing amount of torque. I think it's 339 horsepower and a lot of torque. I think it's around about 650 foot pounds. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's somewhere around about that. It's definitely um, a very, very, very nice, throws you in the back of your seat sort of power that you get from there. It's got the 8 speed ZF box, so it's on a rotational dial. 
like I said, lots of wood, lots of leather. Satellite navigation system, this is a 2013 model. Satellite navigation system is more than adequate. Uh, the push button setup is you know, absolutely fine. The dials, I'm not a massive fan of these digitized dials that you're finding cars now. I'm much more of a stock standard physical dial instead of, you know, obviously being digitized. But I mean, this is just how the, how the car game is now going. But yeah, it's very nice, it's very comfortable. This, um, I don't know if it's just because it's the autobiography, you do get a leather headliner. It's got the Meridian sound system. It's even got double glazing, but the double glazing that I've seen is, it just looks very thin, the double glazing. It's almost like they've shaved a single glazed piece of glass and then made a double glazing. It just doesn't, it just doesn't sort of look like double glazing. It just looks really, really thin. Um, but again, it is very nice and quiet in here. Everything is, you know, all your amenities in this car, all of your little mod cons, everything is pretty much self-explanatory. They do drive nice, these. And the person who owns this car has optioned for a £600 set of lamb wool mats. Custom made, my, my eyes, custom made. They're lovely, they're thick, they must give so, some sort of sound deadening uh, to the cabin uh, although I wouldn't want to walk in dog muck and then get into my L405 with its sheep's wool carpets most definitely not I think I'd rather do that in my L322 with its rubber mats and uh, sort of see how that goes there <laughs> yeah like I said it's, 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 it is a nice car this it is a nice car uh, values values have depreciated like it's gone off a cliff obviously with everything that's going on with the uh, Land Rover, Range Rover, insurance sort of scandal that's going on you know everybody's getting mugged for Range Rovers and people are stealing off people's driveways you know you can get into them with a laptop now start them up when you're away you know it's that, it's that sad reality of you know I suppose where the world's at really you know the uh sad reality is is that you know people are jealous cars are now being stolen no order and the range rover is probably top of the list on this one you have to go on some twisty bends now because this car weighs a lot it does weigh a lot in fact it could weigh more but it does weigh a fair chunk of fair weight this is obviously air suspension 22 inch wheels these are aftermarket 22 inch wheels so it did come uh, with 22 inch wheels from factory believe it or not uh, somebody has obviously put the aftermarket hawk wheels on these um standard size tires so i think it's like 275 40 22 i think don't close on that one as well uh, but yeah i'm going around some really really hard cornery bends here and it's just it's such a big car but it doesn't doesn't borrow, there's no dramas or anything, it's just really nice and it's, it's fairly planted for what it is. It really is, it's, it's quite strange because it really throws you off when you look at the outside of the car and you get it in this lap of luxury and you think it's going to be wallowing all over but it, it genuinely doesn't, it's it's quite poised for a, such a big car. So would I buy an L405 Range Rover? Well, it's one of those really really strange things because obviously at the moment the L405 is you know it's in the realms of uninsurable Range Rovers and it's one of those things where do you really want to be putting that amount of money in they have came down massively I mean you can literally pick up an L405 Range Rover autobiography like this for £14,000 I've seen them go on eBay for £14,000 and this is just another the word it's a very expensive expression because a lot of people now are buying these cars because they want the champagne lifestyle look for lemonade money and they can't insure them and it's one of those things where I personally like it I love it I love what it stands for which is a luxury SUV but I feel like it's lost some of its Range Roverness 
I feel like it's lost some of its robustness and its, you know, its ability. Although I haven't test drove, test drove this off road, but I genuinely do feel like it's just, it doesn't feel like a Range Rover. A Range Rover should be multi-purpose, it should be robust, it should be, you know, a Swiss Army knife in one respect and then just a, you know, a luxury lounge just to waft you along. But, yeah, I think I would buy one if it was a daily driver. Um, but, saying that, you can't actually get an L322. Uh, which is probably next to the classic Range Rover is my most favourite Range Rover, the L322, and you can actually get this engine, the 444 DT, whatever it's called. Uh, you can actually get this engine in the very late models of the L322, and they are fantastic. Slightly less power, I think they're about 313 horsepower instead of a 339 but more than adequate for an L322 um, same engine same gearbox with the rotary dial and everything and it's just you know you can have that same engine and gearbox set up in an L322 so would I buy one yes but I think in re reality I'd probably go out and buy an L322 4.4 TDV8 this is a lovely place to be it's like I said it, it's just a it makes you feel special, it does, but £15,000 of my money and potentially four to £5,000 of insurance to pay, I think an L322 would just be the better option for me, personally. Uh, and consumer advice, I think the L322 is the, is the better car. But uh, yeah, so thank you very much folks for watching, um, it's, been, it's been great. Um, love everybody's comments. Please, if you haven't already, share, like, share, and subscribe to all the videos, please. Um, there's more Range Rovering coming on. There's, there's more cars going to be out there. We're going to be doing different cars, different views, different test reviews. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I shall see you later. Cheers now.